Is everybody talking about me? What do you think? I have no idea what possessed me, but to be honest, I quite like it. I mean, I do look a bit like Jesse J crossed with an alpaca, but, you know, blondes have more fun and all that. And just to clarify, I am not taking over from Leighton Williams in Everybody Talking About Jamie. Although they did ask me, I just don't think I'm old enough. <laughs> anyway, that was actually Luke Bayer singing in my intro. He's released a studio version of that song. So check it out on his YouTube page. He's rather good. Anyway, on with the vlog. So, on Wednesday, I went to watch The Girl on the Train. A new film. Well, it's not even new. It was based on a movie, which was based on a book. Or might have just been based on a book. The movie starred Emily Blunt and was set in America. But the book was set in London. So this play takes it back to its original setting in London. And they've got one of the Mitchell sisters... Samantha Womack to play the lead. I'll be honest, I was quite looking forward to this. It went on tour earlier in the year and I didn't manage to catch it. So now that it's transferred to the West End, I got the chance. And it is full of soap stars. Mark Elliott, who you might know from Holby City and EastEnders, and also Alex Ferns, who played Trevor in EastEnders as well. You remember that little more eager gravy? It was very iconic. Anyway, <laughs> whether it's just badly adapted or whether the acting is just piss poor, this is not very good. I'll be honest. I was a little bit disappointed. Basically, it felt like watching a soap opera where they don't really have time to write it very well and just put it together quickly. And also the set, I know it's come from a touring show, but you think if it's gonna go into the West End, just throw a little bit more money into it. Sadly, on all accounts, it just felt underwhelming. And certainly did not compare to Emily Blunt and the American version, which also had Luke Evans in. Hmm, he's fit. <sighs> so yeah, um, Go and see it. It's at the Duke of York. I don't know how long for. It wasn't very good. Next up, I was back at the open air theatre for the press night of Vita. It was sensational. Honestly. I loved it. And I want to go straight back and see it again. They have done such a good job. It's directed by Jamie Lloyd. Oh, if you know any of Jamie Lloyd's work, including the Howell Pinter season last year, you'll know that he has this kind of post-apocalyptic vibe going for him. And it's very contemporary. Now, he's been teamed up with Fabian Alouette, who won an award for The Rink, which if you saw that production, he had people tap dancing on roller skates. He is genius. Now, as well as choreographing Madagascar, which is touring around the UK, Fabian's also been busy choreographing The View Upstairs at the Soho Theatre. 
Now he is unleashed. This show should and hopefully will put him on the map because he is brilliant. If you haven't seen the photos or the pictures, the stage is set up with steps, which was Jamie Lloyd's idea. Now, when he took it to Fabian, Fabian was like, what am I going to do with that? But he does an incredible job of incorporating the steps into his movement. And his dancing is brilliant. It is worth pointing out that there will probably be natural comparisons to Jesus Christ Superstar. Both productions use handheld mics and are styled very similar. Although I do stress that Evita does have its own identity. And it's just a natural comparison to compare it to Jesus Christ, which was at the Open Air Theatre and had a very similar vibe. Now that aside, I cannot stop gushing about this production. For me, Evita is one of my favourite Lloyd Webber shows. And what they've done is stripped it back and presented this gritty version of Evita. And it highlights so much more that normally gets lost and glossed over. To me, Eva Peron was a flawed character. And what this production does is really draws that out. You still feel an empathy for her. Now, for anybody who hasn't seen the show before, I do think they might struggle with following the story. There are very few scene transitions and the majority of the cast remain on the stage for the whole scene. It is honestly a theatrical experience with flares and confetti, bright colours. There's also a lot of pop references put in there, including the Madonna-style bras, down to the colour scheme from 42nd Street, which you might notice. Everything about this production is brilliant. The music has never sounded better, and the sound and lighting come together brilliantly. I would be surprised if this show doesn't sweep the Olivier's next year. Go and see it. After the show, I managed to catch up with Charlotte Wakefield and Michael Xavier, who've both done productions at the Open Air Theatre, as well as Mark Antololi, who last year was nominated for an Olivier for his role in Little Shop of Horrors. He is lovely. We had a good, good catch up. I also think I jinxed the evening. I've never been to the Open Air Theatre where it's actually rained, although I do know that that happens quite a lot. And on the day of the show, I got sent to me my brand new That Stagey Blog jacket. Here it is. What do you think? Basically, I was so excited about receiving this in the post. I tweeted that I hoped it was going to rain so that I would get the chance to wear it. And of course, it lashed it down. But I was loving it. To be fair, it was brilliant. It started raining just at the finale and finished just before they took their bows and felt like they'd actually planned for it. It was brilliant and such a great, great evening. On Friday, it was Luke Burns' birthday. And as a special treat to him, I interviewed him. He loved it. He is directing Jerry Herman's show tune at the Union Theatre and has worked there as an actor, producer, choreographer and now director. He basically wants to take over the building. And fair play, he's brilliant. Here is a little bit of what we chat about. Well, this is um, Jerry Herman's musical review show tune that um, is basically a collection of his top songs that most people will know and enjoy and it's set up in a way so that each scene has a different message or has a different way of explaining certain aspects of life and I have taken the things out of it that I think you know in the introduction to the script it says it's a lyric as dialogue concept using real actors and in real life so I did exactly that and I used 
the people that we had on stage with the songs that we were given and I've turned it into a bit of a jukebox I would say you know it's there are there are stories that happen characters have a journey as opposed to just people standing on stage singing a song and I've thrown in the odd tap step ball change in there too nice yeah. I also managed to chat to the whole cast which will be in a video later in the week I left them to go to the Pheasantry Pizza Express to see Lee Mead in concert. Now Lee is a bit of a legend. He won BBC's talent search for Joseph way, way, way back centuries ago. <laughs> Can't believe I did that. Anyway. He now is in Holby City, but while he's not doing that, he still likes to do these little intimate gigs and travel around the country. And he has an incredible voice. Now, what I did notice was the audience is made up of, dare I say, older people? I think I was the youngest person in the audience, and I'm not even particularly young. Now he's a bit of a crooner, so I do get why he attracts an older lady, but they go wild for him. They were on their feet after every song. He presented a nice mix of classic show tunes and some pop songs and had a brilliant, brilliant band. And of course, he had to finish a show with this classic from that show. Saturday evening, I was back at the Union Theatre to this time watch Jerry Herman's show tune. Yes. I'm not gonna lie, I was a bit meh. I mean, it is brilliant and they do an incredible job. I just. Jerry Herman is renowned. He wrote the likes of Le Cage of Roi, however you say it and Hello Dolly. And these are classics, but I haven't actually seen either of them. I know, what's that about? So I didn't actually know much, if any of the songs, but they were presented really, really well. I'm sure if you know his music and love it, then you will love this show. But for me, I don't really know the music, so. And although the cast were brilliant and all really, really, really good, and Luke's done a really classic job with them, it just felt a bit... It was nice, wholesome show. I think this is a problem with me. I kind of want something more. It's just very traditional, very pleasant, very good. But for me, I just want to see something different, something a bit edgier. But yeah, it's wholesome, it's great, the performers are brilliant. Now the cast is made up of recent graduates and they're all relatively the same age. So it does feel like you're watching a grad show rather than a professional production, if that makes sense. Not to discredit these performers because they are brilliant, but you know what I mean. It's on until the 24th of August, so if it's your cup of tea, Definitely go and see it, because you will enjoy it. I just don't drink tea. Now, on Sunday, I was invited to a burlesque show at the Albany near Great Portland Street. Now, this was called A Spoonful of Sugar. 
and had five performers, three ladies and two gentlemen in drag, who all played Disney princesses and did... Well, they basically got naked. But that's burlesque. Um, yeah. It was put together by a group of ushers who all worked together front of house at Aladdin. Now, I've never worked front of house, but I know a lot of people do. And I can imagine it's so frustrating to have trained as a performer and then have these jobs where you're watching these people night after night on that stage and you just want it to be you. I think, and also, I, from what I gather, the shifts can get quite dull and quite boring. So good for this group of people who've decided to take matters into their own hand and produce their own shows. But it did feel like that. It just felt like they'd flung it together in their tea break. It wasn't really polished. It felt a little bit under-rehearsed and some of the vocals were a bit ropey. But all in all, it was bold and brassy and they gave me cupcakes, so I should be grateful. It was part of the Camden Fringe and was only on for one evening. And it did have a very supportive audience made up of friends and family and was full. And everybody seemed to enjoy it. Apart from the couple who was sat right on the front row who decided to leave after 10 minutes. Bit awkward. I was invited along by Aaron Jensen who dragged up for the evening and played Ariel as well as, I can't remember the other princess, the one from Hercules. Is she from Hercules? Anyway, thank you Aaron. I do appreciate the invite. It was a good evening. So, that about wraps it up for this week. It's been a, a bit of a crazy one. I finished filming after five weeks, which was a bit sad. I'll be honest, I really don't like goodbyes. Uh, it really felt a bit sad to leave it all. But I am going to look forward to lying in. But I probably will be back for reshoots later in the year. In the meantime, I've also been moving house and trying to get myself organised for Edinburgh Fringe. Tonight I will be going to see Refresh. Refresh is a brand new concept in musical theatre presented and created by Ryan Carter and I saw one of their shows earlier in the year. It is brilliant. What are you talking about? Wait! Okay now, from the beginning. They do reworked and reimagined versions of musical theatre classics by an incredible, very diverse, very brilliant cast. And tonight they open at the Underbelly until the 15th. So if you've got a chance over the next three nights at 7.45, make sure you get yourself down there because you will love it. I promise. And if you're going tonight, you will see me in my red hoodie. So look out for me. So that's it for this week. From tomorrow, I will be in Edinburgh and I will be doing a daily vlog telling you about all the shows and everybody I meet while I'm at the Fringe. 
And also, this will be the very last vlog that I do from this room. This is my bedroom here in Catford, where I've been living for the past year. And I recorded every single one of my vlogs here since January. From September, I will be living in Chiswick and doing all my vlogs live from West London. So, please do keep watching me over the next two weeks while I'm in Edinburgh, and then do catch up with me with an all new studio in Chiswick. In the meantime, it's time to go. See you in Edinburgh.